John Mendez here. We're just doing another of our, our little how-tos. For this one, we've been given a boat, which I call a shed boat, which is not supposed to be derogatory, but it refers to a boat where we've got a large enclosed wheelhouse stuck fairly far forward. So we have a bit of a problem with windage. Um, and so to deal with that, we've got two little things that we can bear in mind. First is a puff. When we go to manoeuvre the boat, Sometimes we just need a puff of throttle, not really to give any great speed, but just to give that fraction more grip on the water. Quite important, particularly when we're trying to turn, as if it's a smallish space. And the other ones, when we berth these, it's much easier if we do it stern to the elements. So we'll just show you a couple of ways that we can go into a berth. One where we've got the wind on the stern of the boat, that makes it easy, and one where we're going downwind, which makes it less easy. So we'll just show you the two little techniques that I find quite handy in one of these. So one of the things I mentioned there was a little puff. By that I meant these boats with a big cabin don't sit very well head to wind. They're much happier stern to wind. And the little puff I refer to is sometimes, because nearly all of them are outboard, you get quite a small propeller for your horsepower. So when you put it in gear, it's great for going fast with lots of revs. It's less good for manoeuvring. So sometimes we need just a little puff. So when I go in gear there, the boat doesn't dramatically move. And particularly when I reverse the helm, and this one's got quite a lot of top turns, so we'll just get it all the way around. When I go astern, it's not biting greatly. And sometimes I need just that little, find a little puff of revs. Just literally a hundred, just to give me that little bit of extra bite. So that little puff, you need to practice, because when you go in gear, and it's not really a rev counter thing, it's more to do with listening carefully. As I'm putting it into gear, I just need that little puff. And that just allows me just to give that bite on the water. Not about speed, it's just about a little bit of momentum and grip. So I'm coming into my aisle, and I'm going to let the bow drop downwind, and I'm going to reverse up into my chosen berth, which is the fourth one along here. So I'm going into the fourth one along, so I'm just gonna go neutral on my throttle to reduce my speed. I'm gonna let the bow go downwind, so a little bit of wheel to port into a head. Don't need a puff at this moment, because the wind's already helping the bow. It's not windy today, but it just helps. And then I'm gonna bring my helm reasonably straight and just go to stern to stop my boat. Now, when I look out my window here, that's the berth I want. So I'm going to put the helm over to starboard and go astern and just drag the stern of my boat towards where I'm going. And if I'm not happy with the angle, I can bring the wheel all the way back round to port, and just have a little click ahead. And then you can use the engine on these outboards, just like a gun sight, gives you a lovely view of what's happening. So here we're going to go astern. And because it's quite gentle, which I said is a bit of an issue, it's actually also quite nice because if we're going up against those elements, I can just come back to neutral there and my boat's just drifting in and the wind is acting really nicely as a brake. And if I try and do this in the head, because of the windage on the bow, we tend to lose the bow at the wrong moment. And when we go astern to slow the boat down, not a lot happens. So we get a, bit, get a little bit scary. So we're just coming up there really nice now. Now I'm going to put the helm just a fraction away and have a click of stern again. And that's just to move my stern away from the dock because I don't want to clonk it. And now here, I'm just going to put my helm towards the dock. One click ahead. So that's just meaning that my boat is now pretty much stationary alongside. I can now step out. That's allowed me to just, with a stationary boat, lean over the stern, pop the line on, put the helm just straight or towards the dock, into gear just to take the tension on the line, and then put it in gear and hold, and just put the wheel fraction to the dock, and now I am moored. So we're using that wind as a brake for the boat, because the astern gear on its own is not great at stopping, so we're using the wind to stop the boat as much as we can, in and out of gear of astern to keep us gently moving. When we get there, Click overhead to make a stop, get the boat stationary, 
drop that line on into gear ahead to force us alongside. So I mentioned that puff. We'll just go through it again. I'm sitting here stern to the wind. Now these boats, anything with a large cabin forward on the boat, sits much happier stern to the wind. The problem we have is trying to swing all this bow through that wind. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by that little puff. I'm going to put the wheel hard over the starboard and I'm going to go astern to get my boat turned. So when I put it in gear, we don't get much bite. But if I give it just that little puff there and you'll just feel it's dragging me up much quicker. So now when I go neutral, start to bring the wheel round. Wind's now coming onto the port bow. I've gained myself loads of room to get that turning without getting pushed into that downwind dodgy spot. So we're go doing a turn towards the strongest element, as we've been always teaching, but we're just doing it with the stern of the boat first because this type of craft is it's our work bow to the elements. It just doesn't respond well. And the small prop on the outboard means we don't get a lot of initial bite. So the stern to the elements here allows you that little bit more comfort and escape room. Now we're going to come back in and do the berth opposite, which is a downwind berth. But what I'm going to do is going to drive into the berth, stop the boat, and then using that astern again, just bite gently astern. So I'm berthing the actual boat into that strongest element, not going downwind, which can get quite scary. So we'll just show you what I mean. So having just turned into my aisle, looking at my berth over there off my port bow, and my danger is as I turn in, the wind's on the stern of the boat, so I've got to make sure I get the boat stopped. Now I'm lucky, the berth is a bit longer than the boat, which is great news. So we're going to take it into the berth, just going to go neutral, wheel over, back into gear. I'm going to try and turn in a fraction early. And the reason for that is that I want to try and bring the boat in reasonably parallel to the pontoon without too much momentum. I've got it going in there reasonably nicely now. I'm just going to go neutral. My momentum is towards the pontoon. And as she comes in here, we're a little bit wide, but we can deal with that. Just going to go gently astern now. And as that astern starts to bite, and this is where you might need just that little puff of revs to make your boat stop. I'm putting the wheel all the way over. And then back to neutral, I'm stopped. In fact, I'm actually going a fraction of stern here now. I'm straighten up my wheel, go stern again. So I'm doing almost the same manoeuvre as I did upwind. But I'm just allowing myself to step back out. There's my fender on the pontoon. Line's gone across and made up. And at this point, my boat is moving aft that much, literally. So I'm attached, I can step back in, have a look at my gunshot, helm's way slightly towards the dock. A click just takes the slack up on the line as the line comes tight into gear, and she'll just hold on all day long. So what we're trying to do is take it into the hall and then actually stop and berth by going a stern into the elements. We're doing the same as we did there, but in a downwind berth. And you've got to get your head around that, because if you try and come in and attach a bow line, it will all go horribly wrong. You've just got to be stern line, stern line, or stern line. Hence, berth for stern. Stern first on these little things. Much easier.